In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to configure Dream Report to connect to a SciTech Visio historian, access SciTech historian historical values and alarm logs, and how to create and generate reports with data stored in SciTech historian using Dream Report. So let's talk about Dream Report's communication drivers for SciTech software. In this slide, we list all SciTech communication drivers included in Dream Report. We can categorize these into SciTech product families. SciTech SCADA and SciTech Historian. In this presentation, we'll focus on SciTech Historian with connectivity to historical values and historical alarms. These drivers enable Dream Report to connect directly to any local or remote SciTech Historian, expose the Historian's tags for browsing, and report on the data and alarms. We cover connectivity to the SciTech SCADA data sources in a separate video tutorial. In this final slide, we'll follow a typical workflow in creating a Dream Report project using data logged in the SciTech Historian. First, we'll open Dream Report Design Studio and create a new project. Then, we'll open the SciTech Communication Drivers folder and add and configure an instance of the Historical Values driver to our Historian. We can add additional instances to other SciTech Historians as well. We'll also add and configure an instance of the Historical Alarms driver to our Historian. At this point, we're ready to create a new report. We can drop any kind of tabular, chart, or calculation object on the report and browse the historian for any tags to use on the object. After configuring the object, we can start Dream Report's runtime engine and generate the reports. I'm going to launch Dream Report Studio and create a new reporting project. I'll accept all defaults. After the blank project is created and Studio opens, I'll open the Communication Configuration Wizard and expand the list of SciTech communication drivers. We'll only focus on the SciTech Historian drivers in this demo. Configuration of the SciTech SCADA drivers is covered in a separate video tutorial. In this first example, we go to the SciTech section in our Communication Drivers window and configure an instance of the SciTech Historian Historical Values driver. We first add a logical name, and then configure the driver. We'll start by entering or browsing for the name of the SQL Server containing the SciTech Historian configuration and historical databases. This SQL Server can be local to the Dream Report machine, or on a remote machine. Next, we'll select the SQL Authentication mode, either Windows-based or SQL-based authentication. I'll use SQL-based here. Let's test the connection before we continue. Finally, we need to select the Historian's Configuration Database and the Historical Data database name. Click OK, and then add the configured driver to the list. Likewise, I'll configure an instance of the SciTech Historian Historical Alarms driver, which can access either a local or remote SciTech Historian Alarm database. We'll first add a logical name, and then configure the driver. As in the previous example, we'll start by entering the name of the SQL Server containing the SciTech Historian configuration and historical data and alarms databases. Next, we select the SQL Authentication mode. Again, I'll use SQL-based. Let's test the connection before we continue. Finally, we need to select the Historian's configuration database and the historical database name. The other option we can set up in the alarm driver are the alarm filters. This allows us to predefine alarm filters based on various conditions. The default alarm filter exposes all logged alarms from all tags. Let's add a couple of additional filters. We start by entering a new filter name, in this case, High Priority. Then, let's select the filter criteria. In this case, since I only want high priority alarms, I'll choose the Priority property from the list, choose Numeric Data Type, a less than or equal condition, and enter a value of 10. Let me add the condition, and then add the filter. I'll also add another alarm filter for only feeder alarms. I'll create the filter name, add the condition where the alarm name contains the word feed, and then add the filter to the list. Note that the percent sign is the wildcard character. Click OK, and don't forget to add the configured driver to the list. 
We're now done setting up the SciTech Historian Communication Drivers for this project. OK, let's create a new report. We'll start with a default report, Report 0, and give it a name. We'll call it SciTech Historian Shift Report. Let's leave most of the defaults, but we'll change the report generation time to be at the end of every shift. At 7 a.m., 3 p.m., and 11 p.m. We could also trigger the report to be automatically generated on an event. This is where we could use any real-time tag from the SciTech to HMI or a PLC, for instance, for the report generation trigger. Finally, I'll set the report format to be both PDF and Web, and set the option to open the PDF after generation. Now that we've set the basic report settings, let's start adding objects to the report. I'll be adding a single data object, a table to summarize a set of tags, a line chart, and an alarm table. We'll start with the automatic statistical table to summarize data from a set of analog tags logged in the SciTech Historian. I'll select the object from the right side toolbar and then place it on the report. We now need to browse for tags from an external history server. Click the Edit List button and select the SciTech Historian data source we created earlier. You'll see that the SciTech Historian tag folder structure is exposed. I'm going to select a few analog tags from different folders for this table. I'll repeat this until I've selected all my tags. Next, I'll select the time period to report on. Since this is a shift report, I typically use the last 8 hours time definition. However, since my SciTech historian is not currently logging data, I'm going to specify an absolute time period where I know I have third shift data in my historian. Finally, I'll select the various aggregates or statistical functions we want to include. Let's display the first and last values, as well as the min, max, and average values over that shift, as well as the times when the min and max values occurred. You'll notice that Dream Report exposes the tag descriptions as well from the SciTech historian, which I could change if I wanted to for the purpose of this report. We can further configure each of these functions if necessary for conditional formatting, decimal places, captions, engineering units to display, etc. Detailed configuration of the automatic statistic table is covered in a dedicated video tutorial. I'll now go to the Appearance tab to show the descriptions instead of the item names and give the table a title. After closing the table configuration, I'll do some basic column formatting and we're done. Next. I'd like to include the pickling speed tag from the steel mill and have Dream Report calculate how long we were able to maintain a speed of between 150 and 170 feet per minute over the report period. So, I'm going to pick and place a single data object on the report. Name it. And then browse for the steel mill entry accumulator cluster 1 pickling speed tag. I'm going to choose the duration in the interval statistical function and then enter the lower and upper limits. I'll use the same time period as before. Let me go to the Appearance tab to format the object and we'll also enable a raw data hyperlink. We will see the effect of this when we generate the report in the Dream Report web portal. I'll click OK to close the single data object, do some formatting, add a static text label, do some final alignments, and then that object is done. We're now going to place a line chart on the report. Again, I'll get data from an external history server, the SciTech Historian Historical Values Driver, and add a couple of flow meter tags to my trend. The first tag I'll add is the line 1 flow. I know that the data has been logged in SciTech Historian on change of value, resulting in a huge amount of data being logged to the historian. So to minimize how much data is retrieved, I'm going to take advantage of Dream Report's aggregated data filter, or ADF feature, to extract and only plot one value for every minute. I'll open the ADF editor, and create a sample base filter 
at one sample per one minute. While I'm here, I could also set up an aggregated data filter showing hourly average data. When I return to the line chart configuration, I'll apply this one sample per minute ADF to the flow tag. I'll add this tag to the chart and repeat the same procedure for line 2's flow rate. I don't need to define the one minute ADF again, simply apply the same filter I just created a few minutes ago. I also want to filter the data on this chart to only plot the flows when the values were greater than zero. To do this, I'll apply an advanced SQL condition. In this section, I'll browse for each of these tags and enter the condition where each flow is greater than zero. What we're actually doing here is building a SQL WHERE expression that Dream Report will use to filter the data. Advanced SQL conditions can be applied to data in most objects in Dream Report. Finally, let me go to the Appearance tab to name and format the line chart. Add units to display on the Y axis. And display the legend. I'll also enable the raw data option, which will allow us to click on the chart on the web report and view the raw data and save it off to a CSV file if needed. The last object we'll add to the report is an alarm table, which will get alarms logged to the SciTech historian. I'd like my alarm tables to start on a new page, so I'll right click and insert a new page into my report. I'll pick and place the alarm table on the report. Then, get data from an external history server. Click the Edit List button and select the driver we configured for the SciTech historian alarms earlier. And we'll check the high priority alarm filter. In the Appearance section, I'll add a table title and then select which alarm fields to show. The fields shown here are specific to the SciTech historian alarm logs. I'll click OK, place the table on the report, and format the columns to fit. I'll duplicate this alarm table just to show a different alarm filter applied. In this case, only the feeder alarms and give this table a different title. I also want to highlight any alarms with a duration greater than 10 minutes, so I'll go to the Advanced Visualization option to set the font to red for that condition. Finally, I'll use the Alignment tools to neaten up my report and we'll also apply a previously created page template to the report with a header, footer, and logo. Once that's done, let me save and load our report. Although I scheduled the report to run automatically, I'll generate the report now from the Runtime Management Console. You'll see that the next scheduled time for this report is 3 p.m. today. Once the report generates, we see the PDF document open, showing the process summary table, which summarizes a set of tags being logged in the SciTech historian, the total duration in hours, minutes, and seconds that the speed was between 150 and 170 feet per minute during that shift. We also see in the line chart, with values plotted at one minute intervals. And then on the second page, the alarm tables, with a second table showing only the feeder alarms. You'll also notice a long duration alarm is highlighted in red. The last thing I'm going to do is configure the Dream Report web portal so that we can look at some of the interactive tools on the web report. I click the Configure IIS button and wait for the web portal to be configured. Now that the portal has been created, I'll open my browser to the website.
and will select and generate the web version of the SciTech Historian report. Once it generates, let's take a look at the duration in the interval calculation. Since I enabled the Show Raw Data hyperlink, let's click on this value. Here we see the raw data that this calculation was based on, and if I select the chart option, we can look at a trend of the speed tag over the specified time period. We can also zoom in and out using our mouse wheel and hover over a point to get the instantaneous value. Now let's look at the line chart and click on it. Because we enabled the Show Raw Data option on the web chart, we can now select the tags, then view the raw data, and even save it off to a CSV file if we want. Let me return to the web portal and open up the previously generated PDF report. We encourage you to explore the many other features of Dream Report, including the wide variety of tables, charts and web objects, SBC charts, setpoint analysis tools, and much more for great looking reports and data analytics. And all of this from your favorite historian, HMI, PLC platform, or any other data source. Thank you.